tough and they're really rough and nothing's working, but there's something inside of you that says, I just have to follow that because you don't know who you are. Welcome to the Bench on self podcast. My name is Anna, but you can call me Anshi, and thank you so much for tuning in. Bench on self podcast is about navigating binge eating disorder struggles, disordered eating, and negative body image. Although I share my personal experience with having a negative body image, eating disorders, and I do uncover bits of my personal story, this podcast is not as much about me as it is about you beautiful human beings who struggle, who fight, who grow, and who evolve every single day. This podcast is for anyone who wants to feel supported on their recovery journey and simply for anyone who's trying to improve their relationship with themselves. I believe together we can turn something so negative such as binge eating into something more positive and hopefully go from binging on food and self-hatred to binging on self-love. Subscribe to the Binge on Silva podcast on your favorite platform and tune in every Tuesday for a new episode. But there's something inside of you that says, I just have to follow that because you don't know who you are. Disclaimer. Bench on Selva podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It doesn't provide professional medical advice and it is not a substitute for diagnosis or treatment. In this podcast, we cover the topic of eating disorders, so if you find this topic triggering, it may be better for you not to listen to this podcast. Always make sure to put your mental health first. Hello everyone, welcome to the Binge on Self-Love podcast. My name is Anna, but you can call me Anchi and I'm your host. A huge thanks to everyone who tuned in today to listen. I'm so glad you're here. And most importantly, I truly, truly hope that this podcast, the topics that we cover in each episode, help you in some way. Maybe you feel less alone knowing there's someone somewhere feeling exactly the same as you or going through a similar situation, dealing with a similar issue. Maybe some of the tips I share help you not to give up and give recovery a try. Or maybe it helps you take some time off for yourself and make yourself and your health a true priority. I always remind myself that should this podcast help just one person out there, it will swell worth recording and honestly this podcast and the entire podcasting journey has been helping me as well all i say all i share with you throughout the episodes i'm saying for myself as well because i know what it feels like feeling like you don't have any more power to keep going to get up and give it yet another try I know that feeling when you feel so uncomfortable in your own body that you feel like you'll never want to leave your house again. I know the feeling of self-loathing, doubting yourself and trying to make sense of anything basically. And that's why I'm doing this podcast, saying the things I say, sharing the things I share, because I know that it's exactly what I would want to hear. So, so much to begin with. I just wanted to say thank you for listening and I hope this podcast helps you at least a little bit. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's episode. Binge eating disorder is the most common eating disorder in the United States, according to data from National Eating Disorder Association. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any up-to-date worldwide data, but I think Binge eating disorder is the most common in many Western countries. As some of you already know, I've been struggling with binge eating disorder myself for well over 10 years now. I've been able to recover for about three years, but recently I've relapsed and I started binging again. And it got me thinking about what has actually helped me over the years battling and overcoming binge eating disorder. I have written down a few tips that I see not only retrospectively but also right now in my current circumstances as key points and I would like to share them with you today. Heads up, I'm not a dietitian nor a psychologist so all of the tips I'll share with you today are just some of the things that have helped me over time 
deal with binge eating disorder. They are not the only things that have helped me. It was a combination of many things and many factors. And also an important thing, these are things that have helped me, which means they may, but they also may not help anybody else. So what has helped me? dealing with binge eating disorder throughout the years. My tip number one is meal prepping. For me personally, meal prepping became one of the most important things in my binge eating disorder recovery. And I'm not talking about meal prepping so that you can count calories, not at all. I'm talking about meal prepping because this way you are pretty much reducing the chance of coming home super hungry and then binging on everything that you put your hands on and you're feeding your body on a regular basis which means you're not starving half of the day only to binge later and that gives your body reassurance that it's not going to be starved again. So meal prepping and eating regularly is something that has helped me a lot. How often you should eat is not in my competence to tell you everyone is different. I think the best way to figure out what works for you is to just try and test it and see if you and your body feel better eating three times a day, four times a day, five times a day, six times a day or whatever. I personally like to eat five to six times a day, but again, that's just my personal preference and it doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Before I started preparing my meals, I would have breakfast at home, then I would leave for work. I would usually get hungry around 10. Somehow I would get through the lunchtime and I didn't have the option of going to a restaurant or a canteen. So all I could do was either grab some fruit at work or I had to go to a nearby store and buy something. Usually it was some pastry with a spread or something, leaving me hungry again very soon not being able to concentrate at all, then I would leave work at 5, go straight to the store, buy everything I put my hands on, go home and binge. And it went like this pretty much every single day. Once I started meal prepping, the binge sessions slowly started to decrease because I wasn't starving myself, I wasn't feeling hungry all the time. And when I came home from work, I had dinner, some snacks, and I felt good, satisfied, satiated, usually with no urge to binge. The time you spend meal prepping is well worth it, trust me. Plus, it usually saves you some money, which is a nice bonus. What also helped me was that as I was planning my meals ahead, I reduced my trips to the store to usually once or twice per week. So that also helped me to handle the binge urges because in 99% of cases, if I went to a store, I would buy food to binge on because it was right there. I'm going to be honest, of course, it didn't work 100% of the time. There were times when I would go to the store and buy food to binge on anyway, but it definitely helped me to reduce the binge sessions in the long run. Also, as I got used to meal prepping, it made me think of food less. You probably know that when you struggle with binge eating disorder, pretty much all you think of is food or that you shouldn't have eaten this or that you want to eat this but you feel like you can't or that you will binge when you get home. Either way, food is on your mind pretty much all the time. But when I knew that I prepared my meals, I usually was able to concentrate on other things because I didn't have to worry about what I will eat and whether I will be satiated or whether I will feel the urge to binge. So I highly recommend giving meal prepping a try to anyone who struggles with binge eating. If anything, it will reduce the opportunities to binge because you will always have some food with you when you feel hungry and you won't risk binging when you get home because you didn't eat all day. One more thing I would like to highlight though is that while prepping your meals in advance is surely beneficial, it shouldn't mean that you can't eat anything that you haven't prepared at home or that you should feel guilty or bad or in any negative way for eating out or when you go out with your colleagues or friends or whoever. 
Life is full of unexpected events and it's completely normal to eat out, to go out with family, friends or colleagues. Meal prepping should always serve as a tool and it should be a good servant to you and it should never turn into a bad master that will limit you from living your life the way you want to live it. My second tip, something that has helped me deal with binge eating disorder, is having a routine. Now, I realize having a strict schedule, having a routine may not be suitable for everyone, but personally, I thrive when my life is organized and when I have everything under a strict schedule and when I know in advance what I'm going to do, when, etc. If you will repeat the same thing over and over and over again for a long time, you will create a routine. I know that routines may evoke stereotypes, which is fair enough, but having a routine has helped me so much when it comes to dealing with binge eating disorder. Routines can help you incorporate certain things into your life, but equally they can also help you avoid certain things in your life. So for example, in the past five months or so, I have built a routine of waking up at 5 a.m., picking my stuff and going to the gym. It was very difficult the first few weeks, the first few months even, but eventually it became a routine and it helped me ensure that I do get that workout done without even thinking twice about it. Because until then, until I create that routine, I would try to wake up in the morning and go to the gym, but I usually never did. So I promised myself I will go in the afternoon, but then I stayed late at work and I wasn't able to get there. And it went like this for many, many months until I created that routine. And that routine helps me to stick to what I want to do, to what I know is good for me, if that makes sense. So the same can help you when it comes to dealing with binge eating disorder. If you create a routine that basically makes you avoid binging, that can help you so much. For example, if you know that you are more prone to binging in the morning, then you can try to build some healthy routine that will basically make it impossible for you to binge because your routine becomes so automatic that there's no space for binging. My tip number three is to not restrict yourself and not skip meals. Let me explain. Binge eating disorder thrives on us quote-unquote trying to compensate for the binge by eating very little or by not eating at all. When I was binging on a daily basis, I would skip meals because I was either too full from the binge or because I thought that by skipping the meal, I would make it up for the previous binge. But it doesn't work like that. The more we restrict ourselves, the more hungry, both physically and emotionally, we will become. And the stronger the urge to eat and to binge will become. Anytime I would try to restrict what I ate, anytime I said to myself, you're done eating chocolate, you will never have another ice cream again, it always ended up with a binge. Recovering from the binge eating disorder doesn't mean going from one extreme to another. It should be about finding peace and balance in food. And we can't find that balance if we will continue setting strict rules on what we can eat and when and under what conditions and labeling food as healthy and unhealthy. And seeing some types of food as cheat meals is highly unlikely going to heal our relationship with food. Food is food no matter how we call it or how we label it. What has definitely helped me was not restricting myself. Just trying to learn to listen to my body and to what I feel like I want to eat and not feeling, preferably not feeling in any way about it. My fourth tip is to make yourself a priority. It may sound stupid, but taking the time for yourself is so important. Make the time to go to the therapy if you've been thinking about it for some time. Make the time to think things through. Take the time to educate yourself on what's been bothering you and take the time to recover. I'm privileged in a way that I had the space and money to go to therapy, that I have a supportive partner who's got my back all throughout my recovery journey 
and I also don't have kids yet so I can dedicate all of my free time to pretty much whatever I want or need to but I am very well aware that not everyone has that and that oftentimes in the hustle and bustle of the day it's not always possible or it doesn't always seem possible to make yourself a priority but please just try it try to make your mental health and physical health your priority because they are so important and as cliche as it is you need to fill your cup first you need to heal yourself and accept yourself before you can start giving that to anybody else even if you're trying to give all the love you have and all the time and effort and energy to everybody else to avoid those problems it will get you one day and there won't be anywhere else to run from it than face it and solve it I've tried to convince myself that it's normal to hate yourself, that's just the way I am, that everybody has problems, which is true, everybody has a problem, but that's not an excuse for not solving them. I've been lying to myself, thinking that it doesn't really matter whether or not I like myself, but it caught up with me a few years later when I became so depressed, demotivated and dealing with my emotions in a wrong way by binging and procrastinating and there's nowhere to go from there you have to start facing the problems and you have to start dealing with them so the earlier start the better taking the time just for ourselves and to deal with our problems may seem selfish but it's actually the opposite you deserve to be happy and healthy and that's not going to happen overnight My fifth and final tip for dealing with binge eating disorder is to avoid falling into the all or nothing mindset. Now I've talked about the all or nothing mindset in separate episodes in this podcast. I'll make sure to link them in the show notes so you can listen to it when you're done with this episode. Binge eating disorder thrives in the all or nothing mindset. Do you know why? Because of the very thin line between all or nothing. For example, you wake up in the morning and you promise yourself that you're going to eat nothing but super clean and healthy today. It goes according to your plan up until the afternoon when one of your colleagues brings donuts to work because they're celebrating a birthday or something like that. You try to resist it, but eventually you do have a donut or two And that's when your mindset starts to go downhill. You tell yourself that you messed up anyway. And instead of going home and following through with your initial plans, you stop in the supermarket on your way home to buy food and binge the entire evening. What I've just described is what has happened to me numerous times. Just there never really has been a colleague bringing donuts to work. But it was always something that triggered me and that turned me into this it doesn't matter anymore mindset. All or nothing mindset is stopping us from recovering because it divides food into good and bad. And it makes us think that having a treat or eating something that we ha- something that we haven't planned in advance is bad and that it means we've messed up. If we get away from that mindset that our diet is something that's perfect, then there's nothing we can mess up. The moment I start to think about what I just ate or what I'm about to eat as a cheat meal or as unhealthy or simply as something I shouldn't eat, something that's going to mess up my routine, I am back to all or nothing mindset and everything goes downhill from there. Anytime I say to myself that I am not going to have any chocolate this week or any tree this week, guess what? The week starts and two chocolates will already be gone. Food shouldn't be our enemy. It shouldn't be something we fear. It should be our fuel so that we have enough energy to whatever we want. So please keep in mind that there's no diet or whatever that you are messing up if you have something that wasn't planned or if you feel like you want to have a chocolate so you have it. It doesn't mean you messed up anything. So let's summarize the five tips that I have just shared with you. My tip number one is to prepare your meals in advance. My tip number two is to create a routine to help you push through the hard days. My tip number three is don't skip meals and don't restrict yourself. My tip number four is make yourself a priority. And my fifth and final tip is to avoid the all or nothing mindset. 
I'll be happy to learn if there are some things that have helped you to deal with the binge eating disorder. So please feel free to DM me on Instagram at binge and sell laugh. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the Binge on self podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts or YouTube so you don't miss any future episodes. I'll be back next Tuesday with another episode. Until then, have a great rest of the week and talk to you soon. Bye!